Hi there, my name's Tyler Stewart. Today I'm going to talk to you about the future, and in particular, the digital evolution of integrity. So we live in a digital age. Right now I can strap on a watch, go for a run, all the while it's taking sensor readings of my heart rate, how far I've run. I can display all of this information instantly on my phone on a dashboard. I can compare previous results, see if I'm improving. I can decide running's really not for me, order myself a taxi, where I'm able to forecast how long that journey will take and how, how much that journey will cost. And whilst I'm sitting in the back seat, I can even order myself a pint. So if our social lives are so enhanced by digital technology, why is an industry have we not utilized these digital technologies to, to enhance our working lives? So why for so long have we seen handwritten reports or isometrics that have been photocopied over and over again to the point that we can't see the lines anymore? Excel spreadsheets that have been overwritten and misused and they're not much use to people anymore. In 2015, uh, Deloitte performed a global study of businesses and industries and measured their digital maturity on a scale of 1 to 10. Now, the oil industry came in at a score of 4.68. For context, that puts us closer to arable farming than it does to tech companies like Amazon. Furthermore, in 2018, digital landscaping study of the oil and gas sector performed by the Technology Leadership Board and the Oil and Gas Technology Centre measured uh, operators in the UK CS uh, on their utilisation of digital technologies on a scale of 1 to 5 and the average score there was 2.3. Now that's less than halfway towards what they consider to be optimised. And both of these articles cite the fact that barrels left on the table could be unlocked by utilizing digital technologies. So, what do you think? Donald Trump says old and simple is better. Is he right? I don't think so. Digital technology can be described as electronic technology that generates, stores and processes data. Now, I tell you that because this industry suffers from a disease called dirty data. Now, dirty data can be um, described as duplicated, inaccurate, inconsistent or incomplete data. And this is generally caused by human error during handling. Um, now, this is a problem because uh, in recent uh, articles published by uh, Oil and Gas Journal and Inspection Hearing Journal, uh, they claim that around about 75% of industrial companies can attribute over 40% of their maintenance errors to dirty data. And these are maintenance errors that can cause unplanned shutdowns, LTIs and, and even fatalities. Harvard Business Review claims that uh, workers can spend around about 50% of their working day uh, searching for and validating these pieces of dirty data. And lastly, McKinsey Energy Insights claim that utilization of digital technologies uh, can be worth around about $11 per barrel. And that's not just from cleaning up dirty data, that's, that's utilizing it to, to make um, better forecasts and better predictions. So the incentives really are there. Now, something that's uh, cited regularly as, as a barrier to, to the utilization of, of these technologies is the lack of awareness of what the jargon means or what technologies um, are available or applicable to, to you. So this made me think and put together what does uh, digital evolution look like to integrity. So I came up with something I'm calling the, the circle of bytes. And it's my, my idea of how we can take our data into the modern age. So I'll take you through this 
step by step. Step one, digitize. Now digitalization is simply taking analog data and inputting it into electronic or digital format. So if I'm to view some corrosion on a piece of pipework, type that information into a computer, that's, that's digitizing it. Um, now, we are getting better at this um, in, the, in the oil and gas industry from inspection drones to uh, inspection tablets and uh, new, new techniques like 3D scanning and digital radiography, autonomous inspection robots uh, and subsea uh, inspection snakes as well. What these all have in common is the fact that they're able to create electronic or digital data at source. That's important because it reduces the amount of human handling, um, so reduces the risk of dirty data, and it also means that the, the data is available to those who need it quicker. So, step two, digitalize. Um, so this is taking our workflow or work processes, putting that into digital or electronic format. So if we were to take our standard integrity workflow of having a, a, the integrity management cycle, sorry, having an RBA that drives us to plan, prepare, uh, work packs, go out and inspect, report on that, review, analyze and maybe raise some anomalies or correctives, and then feed that back into the RBA. Uh, what you can note here is that there's potential for a large amount of data sets um, to be kept uh, by a large amount of people. And these can be uh, duplicate pieces of data that are um, out of date, uh, they're, they're not consistent, um, they're not kept in a consistent manner. And also, uh, the way the data flows around that process can be done in an inconsistent manner as well. So. Uh, maybe you could pass a sheet of paper over the desk or you could send an email or something gets stored in a folder. There's a large potential there for things to fall through the gaps. So what we want to do is we want to take away these large separate sources of data and collect that into a single cloud-based database, which is essentially just a large spreadsheet that's kept on an external server that you can access via the internet through software. So then what we do is we mirror uh, our work process in software form. And this allows us to achieve consistency in the way the data is uploaded and downloaded from the database. And it also allows us to achieve consistency in the way that the tasks are progressed around that workflow. Um, and because you have that one clean set of data, allows us to semi-automate uh, processes like creating work packs and creating reports as well. So it, it really creates large efficiency gains. So step three, analyze. Now humans are emotional beings um, and as such we're subject to cognitive biases. This means that having quantitative uh, data available to us when we're making risk-based decisions can be extremely useful. So, as I'd said, we, we have our, our clean, consistent set of data. That makes it easier for us to identify trends, patterns, and use methods like regression analysis, Monte Carlo analysis, to give us better predictions and forecasts so that we're able to plan better. Step four, robotize. Here I'm talking about artificial intelligence which isn't necessarily um, sort of killer robots um, with Austrian accents. Uh, artificial intelligence is, is more ingrained in everyday life than you, probably most of us realize. So from Facebook's facial recognition to Amazon's voice recognition and even Netflix's uh, movie recommendations, these, these all use a, a subset of artificial intelligence called deep learning which essentially allows the computer or the robot um, to learn uh, patterns, identify patterns from large sets of data uh, and make recommendations without human involvement. So there's potential here um, for, for 
from these large data sets that we collect, we're able to get recommendations on uh, when's the optimum time to paint, where should we be painting, uh, what should we be inspecting um, or changing, uh, changing out. Um, the, the technologies also used in automated vehicles like uh, drones, the subsea snakes, cars and planes even, um, where uh, these things are able to, to learn from their environment um, and react accordingly to, to that, the information that's input. And also um, the, the facial recognition technology um, is now starting to be used by drones to uh, identify screen, screen for defects, basically. Um, so it's, it's unfortunately not all plain sailing with artificial intelligence, however. This little machine here is called a Roomba. And it's essentially just a, a little robotic hoover. It sits on a charging pad and on set intervals it scuttles about your house and hoovers up for you. It's fantastic. Um, so what, it, what allows it to do this is it has a little sensor that um, basically allows it to pick up vectors, it checks in its database to identify uh, those vectors as shapes and then it, it's, it uses that to avoid bumping into chairs and tables and it eventually finds the most efficient way of cleaning your house autonomously. And that's great until it comes across a shape that's not in its database, which a man called Jesse Newton discovered when he woke up one morning and found that his dog had left a present the night before, which the Roomba had not identified as a shape. And you can probably guess the rest. Um, so this is the reason that uh, these autonomous uh, vehicles often have an override function for a human to step in when things start to get a little bit sticky. Uh, step five is visualize. Now, telling a story using powerful imagery is the most efficient way of communicating risk. And a common way that we do this is through the use of dashboards. And dashboards are great because they collect all of our important information, they make them visible um, in one, one place and we're quickly able to, to identify if things are going wrong, if they're going well and make decisions based on that. However, take, take this example here. So I'm using this dashboard to predict whether AC Milan or Club Bruges are, are going to win this football match and the, probably the most observant among you will, will note that AC Milan are already 2-1 up and that's, that's an, a helpful stat. Also helpful are shots on target. I see here that AC Milan are nine to one. They're the dominant attacking force. This gives me confidence that they probably are gonna go on, score more goals and win the game. However, you see here a ratio of 25 to 21 throw-ins. This doesn't necessarily help me make my decision. There may be some correlation between how many throw-ins uh, you win to how many games you've won, but I don't know it, so it doesn't necessarily help me. And this can quite often happen with the creation of dashboards where external software companies or service companies provide these for you, and they don't necessarily have an understanding of your business or what's important to you. So just because you can count it doesn't mean that it's important or useful. So you should be able to look at a dashboard and immediately identify where those values are coming from. And if you can't, um, it's probably worth considering whether they should be there. Um, in the modern age, accessibility is everything. So we're all very busy, or at least we like to think we are, uh, going from meeting to meeting. Um, you should be able to identify your risk uh, immediately on your phone. Um, you, via your dashboard. Uh, from there, you'll be able to identify if something's gone wrong and you should be able to immediately drill down that information to find out exactly what that problem is and exactly where it is, whether something's being done about it and if not, can you do something about it? So, step six, uh, utilize. 
talking here about virtual and augmented realities. So first up is virtual reality, which it's a technology that allows the user to immerse themselves in another environment. So in the case here, this guy is uh, immersed in a computer game environment. However, for us, that's extremely useful when we are able to immerse ourselves in an offshore environment when we're still in the office. So this can be used for training people, inductions, even uh, performing surveys, all from the safety of your office. So that's reducing uh, the amount of uh, beds taken up offshore, and it's reducing the amount of personal risk to people. Um, also, imagine you're uh, sitting in a meeting, uh, you're able to, uh, you're discussing an integrity issue, and you're immediately able, able to put on a headset or look on a screen and walk the line that you're talking about or look inside the vessel that you're having a discussion about as well. It's extremely powerful technology. Augmented reality is slightly different where uh, it allows the user to superimpose data on their view of, of their current environment. So this can be done uh, with anything that, that has a smart screen. So from a, um, a tablet to a phone to even smart classes nowadays. So in this example here, uh, we're looking about at pipework surrounding us and we're able to put notes um, or superimpose data on different sections so that the next person that comes along is able to identify the, the remarks that I have made. And this can be really useful when you're, say, monitoring a defect. You're able to superimpose uh, the inspection results on that um, piece of pipework, vessel, structure, you're able to immediately identify where internal corrosion is, um, can be really useful and really powerful. So it, this by no means covers the full extent of technology that's out there that's available. Um, but I, I do believe that these six steps really will help us take our data into the modern age. And I think they'll it will give us the following. So it gives us instant and clean data, efficient work processes, accurate and automated predictions, reduced maintenance costs, failures will be reduced, your risk will be reduced, and because of that, you're going to have a happier workforce. So if you're feeling um, a little bit out of date, overwhelmed with, with uh, the amount of technology that's coming our way, I'd say to you, don't worry, because uh, just recently this man, Japan's cybersecurity minister, admitted to having never used a computer. So in comparison to him, I think we can, we can agree that we're all overqualified. So I'd like to thank you for, for listening and have a good day. Cheerio.